and welcome to video 16, uh, which is a video showing the exam questions that come up on the U Unit 3 AQA Higher on Pythagoras and Trigonometry. You should have watched video 15 about Pythagoras and tri Trigonometry, made some revision cards and know all the theory. Now you should be able to apply it to the exam questions. As always with this, um, I'll show you the exam question, pause the video, have a go, then watch me do the answer. Here we go. First question, pause the video, see what you can do. Okay, we are given a TV, okay, and we're given that um, to the nearest inch, it's got a width of 45 and a height of 26. Work out the size of this television. It says the size is always the diagonal uh, from there to there, okay? So we've got to work out that length. Now, just think about it. We've actually got ourselves a right angle triangle here, haven't we? Because this side is 45, this is 26. We're asked to work out the diagonal. So it's Pythagoras' theorem. Okay, in order to do Pythagoras, okay, Pythagoras said that the hypotenuse squared is the other two added together. We're working out the longer side here. So we can take 45 and 26, square the numbers. Because we're working out the longer side, we add them. So we work that out, 45 squared plus 26 squared, and we would get um, 2701 uh, inches. And we square root that to get uh, the length, and we would get 51.97, 51.97. Because they've rounded to the nearest inch, I think one market here is for rounding to the nearest inch as well, so 52 inches I would write as my answer. So do think about how you would give your answer back in an appropriate way. If you're giving to two decimal places and they gave it to the nearest inch, that doesn't seem right. Give it to them to the nearest inch. Okay, um, taking it forward from there, um, have a look at this question using what we've just done. Um, it's, just see if you could finish off this uh, four mark question using the knowledge we've just got. Okay, um, nothing to do with trigonom trigonometry or Pythagoras, but it's just linked in to 7 part A. So if you've got part A, you've got 4 marks, which is easy. And if you've got part B, you're going to get another 4, which is 8 marks. So, and these are easy questions. Now, it says the ideal um, viewing distance to the screen size is 3 to 1. Okay, the ideal viewing distance. So that means for every like one unit of screen size, you'd have to be three times further away for an ideal viewing distance. Now, Ruba buys a 60-inch uh, television. The sofa is 4.4 4 meters away from the television. Um, is the sofa at the ideal viewing distance? Okay, the first thing I do, obviously there's some problem with units here. There's inches and meters. Don't worry about that straight away. So first of all, say how many inches away it should be. Now, um, ideal viewing would be equal to, um, for every inch you've got to be three times away, so it would be 60 multiplied by 3 is 180 inches away. You get yourself an easy mark for that. Okay. Now, the question is, do you know the conversion between inches and centimetres? Now, uh, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Surely in the exam, you've got a ruler with you. So get your ruler out, okay, and take a look at it. Here, let's move it down here. To me, it's, I mean, a good estimate, uh, one inch here is about 2.5 centimetres, right? So 180 inches, 180 multiplied by 2.5 would give me how many centimetres that should be. So 180 times 2.5 would give me 450 centimetres, which is 4.5 metres, okay? Now the sofa is 4.4 metres away from the television. Um, is, it, is it therefore ideal 
Well, it uh, I would say it is it is nearly it is nearly ideal. Uh, I would probably say it's um, ten centimeters uh, too far. Okay, and it's as simple as that. Now, even if you didn't have a ruler and you were struggling, make up a conversion, and maybe you'd lose that mark, but you'd get a conclusion mark and a mark for working out here. But think, you know, get your ruler out, use the, use the knowledge around you. The less you have to keep in your head, the better. That's an easy one to work out, um, really. So that was eight easy marks. Okay. Have a go at the next question, pause, pause the video, and then watch me do the answers to mark your work. Okay, show that x is uh, 9. Here we've got a right angle triangle. We know two sides. We're asked the other. It's Pythagoras. And we were asked one of the shorter sides. So you square the two sides. Because you're working out the shorter one, you subtract. So you would get 1681 subtract uh, 1600, you get 81 and you'd square root 81 and you would get 9 centimetres. And I would just quote Pythagoras, just quote that you've used Pythagoras. Okay, nice easy question there. Okay, have a go at the next one. Again, uh, pause the video um, and mark your work with my answers. Okay, we've got a 3D coordinate system here. Work out the coordinates of B. Well, B is in line with A, and A was 2 this way. So B must also be 2 that way. But also, B is in line with C in respect of the Y, so it must be a 3 there. And it's not any high, okay? It's as high as A and uh, C, which are both 0 high, so it must be 0. So the coordinates of, of B are 2, 3, and 0. Easy one mark. The coordinates of f, well f is um, the same w way in this direction as a and b, so it would be 2, okay, it's along the same line, it's, it's along the same amount along the y-axis as, as c, so it would be a 3, but it's 1 up the z-axis just like d, so it would be 1, so it would be 2, 3 and 1. You could get those through common sense really, just thinking about um, things and where they look. Now it says work out the length of df. Let's put in df where we see it. df is d here to f. Okay, so I'm just going to colour that a different colour here. df might even like that. There we go. We've got to work out that length. Okay. Now, uh, how on earth do we do that? Well, hold on. We know that length and we know that length. Okay, and this would be a right angle triangle, wouldn't it, on top of it. So this length here, well, to get from this corner to this corner, okay, we're going uh, two units. That's two units along, okay. So this would be a right angle triangle. Let's just draw out what our right angle triangle would look like. Okay, it would be two units here. Okay, and along here, how far along is G from this zero point? G is three along here. Okay, so if we want to, this is uh, df, if we want to work out df, we square the numbers, we're working out the longer side, the hypotenuse, so you add them, so you get 9 and 4 is 13, and you take the square root of 13, and you would get, let's say to one decimal place, 3.6, 3.6 units, and you're done. Okay, um, have a go at the next question, pause the video, and then mark your work. Okay, so we are given two sides and we're asked an angle. Okay, now Pythagoras can't help us with that, even though it's right angle. Um, so Sokotoa must help us. So let's just write down Sokotoa just to get us in the in the swing of things. Okay, let's label up. Step one, always label up, okay? Now, everything's in reference to the angle you're trying to find. That's the opposite. That's the hypotenuse, because it's opposite the right angle. 
Okay, what has O and H in it? Well, SO does, so write down SO. What does SO mean? It means sine of the angle is equal to opposite divided by hypotenuse. So sine of, our angle here is X, is equal to opposite, which is 4, divided by 10. Okay, and therefore X, to get X uh, out of its inside uh, the sine function, you apply the inverse sine to both sides, and in particular then X is the inverse sine of 4 over 10. So in your calculator type, shift sine 4 divided by 10, close brackets equals, and you should get with some luck, 23.6 degrees, let's say to one decimal place. 23.6, and tell the examiner you've done one DP. And there's nice, easy three marks. Okay, next question. Pause the video, have a go, mark your work. Okay, in this question here, it's talking about a river, okay, um, here's a river here, and it asks you, it says the river is a width, uh, constant width, it asks you to work out the width of the river. Now, the width of the river is the length at right angles uh, to the banks, isn't it? So, let's just go like that. So we are asked to work out, we are asked to work out that length there. Okay, now, how on earth do we work out that length there? Well, it's quite tricky. What if instead, uh, we've got, no, what if we moved it there? Do we know anything? No. How about we worked it out there? Because we know the width is constant. Why not work out the width here when we know something? We know some facts here. We have got ourselves here a right angle triangle. Okay, we, are, we know this because it's on a straight line, so this must be 80 degrees. So that angle is 80 degrees. This hypotenuse height, this is a right angle, and the hypotenuse height is 25 meters. Okay? And we want the width of the river. We want this here. Okay? So, step one, label up your triangle. Here's the angle. This is opposite. This is hypotenuse. What of so kawatoa has O and H? Well, so. What does so mean? Sine of the angle is opposite over hypotenuse. Well, in this case, sine of 80 is opposite, which is x divided by 25. Okay, and then rearranging, x is therefore uh, times in both sides by 25, 25 sine 80. And you work that out on your calculator, and you would get 24.6 meters on trigonometry and Pythagoras, um, pause the video, have a go at this question and I'll go through the answers in 10 seconds. Okay, um, we've got a question here and some key facts about the question. It says we've got a square and the shape has one, uh, one line of symmetry. Okay, now, where is that line of symmetry, first of all? Well, it's obviously got to be here. If it was anywhere else, it wouldn't be a line of symmetry. So there's our line of symmetry. We are asked to work out the, sh the area of the shaded part of the square. Now, imagine uh, the shaded, imagine I was trying to work out the shaded. I'm sure you can envision this, but the shaded must equal the area, the area of the whole square, okay, minus two triangles, okay, two lots of that triangle there, that right angle triangle, because that triangle is exactly like that one, because it's got a line of symmetry. So if I could work out the area of the square and subtract two, uh, the area of two of the triangles, I'd get left with the shaded area. Okay, to work out the area of the square, it's the length times the width. What is the length here? So I need to find myself this length. Well, I can do that using trigonometry. Here's a right angle triangle. Here's my angle. Label it up. This must be the opposite, and this is the adjacent. What of so, cat, or toa has O and A? Well, toa does. Okay, 
So write down what uh, to means. It means tan of the angle is opposite divided by adjacent. Okay, so substituting in tan of 70 must equal uh, the opposite, which will leave as O divided by 7.3. So rearranging to get what O must be then, O is therefore uh, multiplying both sides by 7.3, 7.3 tan of 70. So you just type that in your calculator, 7.3 times tan of 70, and you would get 20.06, so 20.06 and unit centimetres. Okay, so that's that last side there, 20.06 centimetres. Okay, well, we're pretty much done now. Let's work out the area of the square. Area of the square must be the 20.06 times 20.06. So 20.06 times 20.06. And you get uh, four hundred and two point two seven centimeters square. Okay, four hundred and two point two seven centimeters square. Now, what's the area of one of the triangles? Well, the area of a triangle is the base times the perpendicular height, so uh, divided by two, so it'd be seven point three times 20.06 all divided by 2 so 7.3 times 20.06 divided by 2 get 73.219 okay centimeter squared so the shaded therefore must equal the area of the square we've got here the area of the square is 402.27 so 402.27 okay and then we're not just going to subtract off one triangle but subtract that triangle and that triangle so two of the same triangles so subtract 2 times 73.19 And you get left with 255.83. So 255.83. Don't forget your units, centimetres squared. And you're done. And that's the last uh, question we've got on Pythagoras and trigonometry for right angle triangles. Now I would like you to move on to the next tutorial, which is going to be trigonometry of non right angle triangles. Thank you for watching.